So how is the MCAT scored? So we talked about how the MCAT has four different sections, which are shown below, and you'll be given a score for each of those sections. Now, each section has a minimum score of 118 and a maximum score of 132. So you'll be given a score somewhere in that range. And then to get your total score, they'll take the score you got for each of those four sections and add them up. So your total score will, will range from 472 to 528, which is the maximum possible score. So those numbers seem kind of random, 125, 123, 528, like how do they get these numbers? And so what happens is they'll look at how many questions for the, a particular section did you answer correctly? And then that's going to be compared to all of the other students who also wrote the MCAT. And so then they'll convert the number that, of questions you answered correctly into a scaled score that ranges from 118 to 132 for each section. And we'll see what that looks like, but pretty much it's creating a normal distribution. And that helps to compensate for any variations in difficulty between passages and questions. So it just makes it more fair and it makes it a lot easier to see how one person did in comparison to the rest of the people writing the MCAT. So the nice thing about this is that the scores will have the same meaning no matter when a student takes the test or who tests at the same time that they did. So this plot is showing the total scores from May 1st, 2020 to April 30th. And so this many people wrote the MCAT. The mean in this case was 501. So it's usually 500, but in this case it was 501. So around there. And then they created a normal distribution. And now when you're given a total score, you can see what your percentile rank is. So for example, in this case, the average was 501. The mean was 501. And that means that you scored in the 50th percentile. Whereas if you got a score of let's say 511, then that means you scored in the 82nd percentile. So these next plots are very similar. They're just broken down a little bit further so you can see how this looks for each section. So first we have the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems section. And again, each section has a minimum score of 118, a maximum score of 132. The mean is 125.1 in this case. So that was the average score. And so again, you can see your percentile rank depending on what you score. So for example, a student who scored 128 in this case, their percentile rank is in the 85th percentile. We can take a look at this for cars as well. So for cars, the mean was 124.8, so just under 125. And so if a student got 125, this actually made them in the 60th percentile. If a student got 128, for example, this resulted in them being in the 90th percentile. And you see a pretty similar story for the other sections, the biology section and the psychology and sociology section. So the means were around 125. And then I also included the percentile ranks here that you can come back to after you've written a practice test to see generally how you're doing.